what is good it's your boy q from next level reefing and i'm back with another video first and foremost i'd like to say thank you for all the love and support i show do per shaded and with that being said make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash the notification bell so you can be notified of every video that i drop which is every single friday all right reefers let's go ahead and dive straight into it now i know you guys clicked on this video because you wanted an update on sting trust me you're gonna get an update on them but i want to go ahead and get into the other stuff first so stay tuned now the first thing i wanted to give you guys an update on is the quarantine tank well for the lack thereof now i know i know the last uh, few videos i said that i was going to keep the fish in the quarantine tank for about 30 days but um I'm be honest with you, it, it's kind of hard to keep it up with the quarantine tank. And plus, they've been in there for 14 days and all of them have been doing great for the exception of two. Uh, the powder blue didn't make it and the female uh, jaw trigger did not make it. Now, as far as the powder blue, they all, <laughs> I might go ahead and give up on the powder blue because every time I get one, the only one that's lasted longer than a few months is the very first powder blue that I had. and I don't know what happened and why it passed away, but I haven't had any luck with the powder blue. So I was thinking to go ahead and, you know, empty out the quarantine tank and then just exclusively have the powder blue in there and then just medicate that one specifically because every time I medicate it and put it in quarantine with other fish, it does not make it. So I'm gonna just try and dedicate specifically to that one fish and that one fish only for 14 days or more or hopefully 30 days to check it out and hopefully you know this time it'll be a, a good run so yep all the fish are finally in the 180 gallon water box peninsula dream tank so the queen angel's been in there for about two days now and the blue jaw trigger hippo tank and the fox face have been in there actually just today i put them in there today uh like i said They've been doing extremely well, especially the hippo tank, because I was really worried about the hippo tank and the fox face. For some reason, in quarantine, I haven't been able to keep those either, but they've been thriving, they've been doing good. I saw the hippo tank catch ick like once, and then I medicated his food and waited a few more days, and it came out on top. And I don't know why the powder blue didn't, you know, the powder blue was eating healthy, it was eating more than any of the other fish. And like I said, I medicate all my food and feed it to them. And then I give them pellets. So I have no idea. I started seeing like some sort of parasite that was eating the side of its uh, body, like a hole. It made an actual hole on its body. And, you know, that was a sad thing to see, but it was nothing I can do. I did everything. Like I said, I fed it with uh, medication. Uh, the quarantine tank was medicated with uh, Cooperman and Proxy Pro or Prozy Pro and I, I don't know it just didn't make it but all the lfs and online been saying like the powder blue the powder browns the achilles tanks are just known to just catch catch parasites and i am no different from that like every single powder blue that i've had has died from some sort of parasite so this is my challenge for me to try to keep a powder blue i'm tired of wasting the bread on a powder blue i've always wanted a powder blue so that's the challenge my personal challenge for me is to you know see a powder blue actually make it through quarantine and survive and live through the dream tank so if you guys looking at the tank right now you see there's probably two to three different fish that i didn't have in the quarantine tank and those are going to be the liar tail antheus now the reason why i got those three was they were have always been on my wish list i love their vivid orange color they kind of remind me of the naked clownfish and since i couldn't find one in my local area and i didn't feel like uh spending a lot of money on shipping online for the moment i went and copped those at my lfs now the specific lfs that i'm talking about is fantastic aquarium so if you guys remember a couple of episodes ago, I was talking about I won a $100 raffle from Fantastic Aquariums. And so I still had a little bit of money left on my account. So I went up and looked at their, their bargains. So every Friday through Sunday, they come out with a new flyer and they have like crazy stealer deals. And this one was no other exception. You know, for the liar tails, I think for three i got them for 14 dollars which was 
crazy. And the cat that was helping me out in the store was pretty much telling me that I wanted to get them in groups of threes. The reason why that is is because one of them is going to transition into a male. So I have all three females right now. And he said one of them will switch out into a male. So it's kind of the opposite of clownfish. So all of them are females. And then I'm hoping, he said it'll take a, a couple to few months. It's longer than clownfish. So it's gonna take a while, but sooner than later, one will transition into a male. So the male difference is gonna be a little bit less uh, bold in the color. And it's also gonna have like a little uh, fin tail on the top. So it'll kind of stick up like an antenna. So that's how you can tell the difference between a male and a female. And I think the females or male, excuse me, is gonna be like a purplish color. Whereas the females are like a vivid orange, like a blood orange color. All right, now let me rewind back to the queen angel just really quick. So if you don't know about the queen angel, the queen angel is not considered reef safe, right? So, or it's a fish on the fringe is what Mr. Saltwater Tank will call it. Now I've seen only a few videos, you know, scattered around on YouTube where there's some people that have like emperor angels and queen angels. There's a guy that I follow on Instagram, Aqua57, I believe. I forgot his name, but he basically has a whole uh, gang of angelfish in his tank and he also has coral in his tank. But I quickly realized what corals you can and can't keep in a reef tank if you have an angelfish. Any euphilias you have, you're good to go. Not gonna mess with them. Any um, Montiporas, like plate corals that you have, not gonna mess with them. If you got toadstools and blastos, he's not gonna mess with them. Now, if you got any trumpets, he's gonna eat that like he ain't eat in his whole lifetime. I mean, he's going to chop and snack on that thing like it's the last supper, try to tell you. And the other coral so far that you can say goodbye to is acans. Again, he's going to eat those like it's just like <laughs> just snacks just throughout the day. He's just going to munch on them. Now, the good thing is the two that I was talking about in particular, like they weren't at as ex expensive. But the downfall is I don't know what to do with the center uh, rock structure now. I don't know what to put on there. So now I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and do my due diligence and see, you know, what angelfish corals eat and what they don't eat. So now that I saw, observed, and learned, I'm just gonna have to, you know, figure out what to do for my next move for corals. And like I was telling you guys before, that's like my favorite fish. So I just have to work around the fish. Luckily, he doesn't like euphilias and toadstools because I would be super pissed if he starts nibbling on those. Now, if you guys have any suggestions, I am open as far as what corals, you know, help me with the due diligence and see what I can keep in the reef tank because like I said, I don't want to give up the queen angel. I'm gonna try my hardest not to. I just have to figure out what to put on that middle uh, pillar and the uh, second arch. All right, so finally, what you guys all be waiting for, you wanna see how Sting the Stingray's doing? Well, here we go. And there you go, guys. There's Sting just chilling on the wall. This is pretty much what he does 90% of the time. Um, I don't, I can't remember if this particular Stingray is nocturnal or not, but he spends most of the time between the back wall of the peninsula tank or suction on the uh, glass. Now I try to catch him uh, swimming for you guys, but he is very difficult to catch on camera. Anytime I see him swimming and I try to get the phone and get it ready, he's already like smacked up on a glass or something like that and it's too late at that time. But I got a little something, you know, of him like kind of flapping towards the, the glass, something like that. That's the best that I got for you guys. Hopefully next video, I'll be able to catch him in the action of, of swimming across the tank. But for right now, man, it's just hard. Now don't get me wrong, I really definitely like that he's now out and about. Whereas before he used to spend most of his time dug into the sand and hiding the sand. So I really appreciate the fact that he's like out and open. 
and it also makes it easier for me to feed him so because he's uh, suctioning on the glass like that and he likes to sit up at the top of the glass I have like these small plastic prongs that I use to uh, feed him the silver side fish with and he'll come right along and then open up his little fin to get the, <laughs> the silver side in his mouth and then I just let go and then he's feeding right there and right now i'm not hand feeding them because he's just too small and the silver size are i have to cut them real small uh hopefully when he gets bigger i'll be able to hand feed him but for right now he's just way too small so i have to use like the plastic tongs to kind of feed him right now so so yeah i feed sting like three times a day and he'll take like three small pieces each and he kind of likes the center part of the fish he doesn't really like the outside like i see him like he'll get it and nibble until the inside piece breaks off from the outside and he'll just spit the rest out and then the fish you know eat the rest so it's a win-win all right now real quick i wanted to talk about bella the bella goby yo bella is getting on my last nerve straight up now don't get me wrong she does her job and keeps the sand bed looking crystal clear as you guys can see here but i mean she's just going overboard now like just rocks and sand just going all over the octo spine and the frog spine and now i'm trying to figure out where exactly to put it like i don't know why that pillar right or the third pillar with all the euphilia she wants to hang out right there like in that center hole that i have she wants to hang out right there and then just have the sand go all outside of that. So basically there is no sand in the center of that thing. It's all on the outside. So I, I woke up today and I noticed that the octospawn was just covered in sand. I was like, why isn't it opening up? That's why, because Bella is agitating the crap out of my octospawn and frog spawn. So I pretty much had to move the octospawn closer to the glass away from the third pillar because every time I take the sand out of the octospawn, she'll come right back and just cover it up again. So I'm like, yo, seriously, um, you're about to get fired. But, you know, she's doing a terrific job otherwise than that. So, you know, I, I, I can't complain too much. I just have to, you know, move around it and hopefully she'll find a new spot soon enough. All right, folks, so that's like the latest update of what's going on with the Dream Tank. I didn't want to keep you guys long this time because I know <laughs> last episode was like over 20 minutes. So I made sure to try to keep this one short. And for next week's episode, it's going to be for my man, Jay Hood. You know, he asked me, you know, what am I doing to um, clear out the green hair algae? So that video is going to be coming up for next week. And I'm going to tell you guys what I used and, and how I cleaned the tank with algae. And like always, people, I thank y'all, I appreciate y'all, and I'll see you on the next one.